Like I've always loved photography. I'm so passionate and so in love with like traveling and adventuring. Like how cool would that be if you could combine the two and turn it into a career? I only had like 3000 followers on Instagram at the time. Don't be afraid to start right now with where you're at and what you know. There's no such thing as the perfect timing and start now and I promise you will reach success so much faster than if you just keep waiting and waiting and waiting. I'll start from the beginning. Um, growing up, I never traveled anywhere besides like Florida for, you know, spring break, family vacation. Um, I never went across the country, never anything. I really didn't travel growing up. And then in college, I went through a really rough period in my life and I just picked everything up and moved out west. I had never been before and um, it was a really big scary change um, but I moved out west and that's when I kind of started going on hiking adventures and trying every single weekend I would try to go somewhere new because I just couldn't believe just how beautiful it was and there were so many different things to do and it was amazing and so um, that's kind of where my love for travel and my love for adventure began um, and then I met my now husband on Tinder, <laughs> which which is a whole different story and <laughs> another big topic. <laughs> yes. Long story short, he was Australian. And so that allowed me to move abroad and live abroad. And then I just really fell in love with traveling abroad and getting to experience different cultures and countries. And ever since then, we've always made it a point to travel at least to a few different countries a year. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> so it started with small steps and then you just gradually fell in love with it and taking bigger steps. Yes. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and how did you how did you start making money from it? Because now I know that that was your full time thing and you have a business around that. Yeah. Yeah. So when I first started out, I remember actually when I moved out west is when I realized that there were people on Instagram who had like really, really big following and they were getting paid by brands to travel and like take photos for them. And I just thought like, I've always loved photography. I'm so passionate and so in love with like traveling and adventuring. Like how cool would that be if you could combine the two and turn it into a career? And so I started my Instagram page with absolutely zero knowledge on what I was doing at all. And I was just taking iPhone photos at the time, um, you know, really just had no clue what it was that I was doing, but I was going on adventures. I was taking photos and I was posting it on Instagram. And then, you know, I started making connections with other people who were into the same things, growing a little bit of a community. And then I went through again, a rough period in my life where um, I was in a job that was supposed to be my dream job. And um, it wasn't. It was a very toxic environment. It was. I was treated very poorly. What and, job was it? Uh, I was a vet assistant, mm -hmm. so I worked at a vet clinic. And um, you know, it was a decent paying job, but it just we were still barely, you know, getting by, living paycheck to paycheck. And I was just so depressed and so miserable. And finally, I woke up one day and I was just like, I, I just can't. I can't go into work again. I can't do this again and wake up, you know, the next day and do it again. Like I just, I cannot, I was driving me crazy. So I quit with no backup plan. Um, luckily my husband was very supportive in this decision. And um, for the, the next few months we were really struggling and like, we weren't sure if we were gonna be able to pay the bills for that month. But I only had like 3000 followers on Instagram at the time. I had just gotten a camera a few months before. So I was no longer just taking iPhone photos, but you know, I was working on my photography and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start pitching myself and my services to brands and seeing, you know, their response, how it goes. I got a few product exchange collaborations and slowly, you know, started making money and started taking better photos and and then reaching out to hotels and, and you know, different um, travel type companies and everything like that. And that's kind of just where it all began and it snowballed. And that's what got me here. <laughs> that's amazing. And now now basically your content content speaks for itself, right? So you don't really need to do so much of the pitching. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, it's that's so, how it seems to my eyes. 
Yes, in the beginning, it is so very difficult, um, especially when you aren't fully confident in your abilities and, and what you can do. And you're just unsure of the whole of everything, really, you know, starting anything new is going to be um, complicated and messy and um, confusing, yeah. but you just have to start and take mess messy action. And um, it does get so much easier and so much better the more you do it mm. and the longer you do it. <laughs> and how do you get the confidence to do that in the beginning? So uh, what would you say to someone who is just just wanting to start uh, earning money while traveling and to get these brand deals? What would you say to someone who is just at the beginning and has, let's say, 600 followers? I would say don't be afraid to start right now with where you're at and what you know. Um, the biggest thing that I see that holds people back isn't the belief or isn't the lack of followers, but the belief that you need more followers. So if you're always waiting for more followers, for better camera gear until you know more information, then you're always going to be waiting because, you know, there's always going to be more to learn. There's always going to be, um, you know, you can always improve and everything like mm -hmm. that. But don't wait until that because there's no such thing as the perfect timing and start now. And I promise you will reach success so much faster than if you just keep waiting and waiting and waiting. I've through this journey um, and teaching other people content creation and how to get paid. I've helped people with as little as 300 followers land paid collaborations with tourism boards, with hotels, with brands. And it's just incredible to see because it's not all about, the followers and and having like this huge presence on social media, but it really can just come down to um, the fact that you reached out to a brand and you offered your service, which can be promotion on your page or it can be photography as well. And I've seen people also sell iPhone photos. So there really mm -hmm. is no good number of followers that you should wait to to start pitching or no skill level that you need to achieve before you can go for it and, and, and do it. You'll be so surprised. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, it's really about taking those first steps and landing your first small thing that will later on just become bigger and bigger. And, uh, then you reach your point where the work speaks for itself. And now brands are pitching to you basically, yes. right? Exactly. And and one of the coolest things about this industry, too, is obviously the more time you put in, the more you grow your following, the better your skills become. It really does like there is no cap on the earning potential or the amount of brands that you can work with or the amount of brands that will reach out to you once you get to that point. So, yeah, always just continue building and, and moving forward. And even if it's not as fast as as you would like it to be, you know, slow growth is still growth and you'll get there. <laughs> slow growth is still growth. I love that. <laughs> I really love that. I think that uh, that is applicable in everything that you do. And it's so, so important to not have everything perfect or to not think that you need to have everything perfect in the beginning and to just start somewhere. Absolutely. <laughs> how did you, how did you feel when you started um, having a bit of success on on social media and um, uh, having appearances in newspapers or news or how is that for you? <laughs> it feels pretty surreal at times still. And of course there are, like I still have months where I will lose more followers than I gain. And I'm just like, oh, what am I doing? Like, oh, it's so frustrating and everything. But you do have those periods of like really big growth and you have those periods of where magazines and blogs and websites have reached out to me and like wanted to publish articles and everything like that. And it just feels really fulfilling and knowing that one, what I'm doing is so fulfilling to me. And, and the fact that I do get to travel and take photos, which are two things that I absolutely adore in life. And I get to use those to make money. And then two, just, being able to inspire other people and show them that this is a possibility and you don't have to, you know, go to your cubicle and work a, 90, a nine to five or be in a job that you hate, like the opportunity to turn your passion into something mm -hmm. like is incredible, especially on social media now where it can be fitness, it can be um, 
you know, travel, it can be fashion, your pets, like there's so many different ways to make it happen. And it's, yeah, it feels really surreal and good. <laughs> yeah, I think we have a really great opportunity now with this, with the social media to actually do what we love because there is unlimited possibilities on what you can, what you can do around the thing that you love doing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I would never think of myself before let's say two years ago, I would never think that I would do a podcast. Never. I would, like, I would probably do something that would show other people's faces or I would be a photographer or something. I would not show myself. <laughs> and now basically I'm, I'm talking openly about, about everything and getting more and more confidence in this I and getting that. more authentic. <laughs> and uh, it shapes me. It makes me, it makes me even... Uh, it makes me grow a lot. Yes, I feel the same way. And I feel like I've completely changed as a person on, on this whole journey. And I feel like I'm much more confident now and much more myself. And, um, you know, I can express my, my thoughts and feelings and everything much better than I was mm -hmm. able to before. <laughs> I, I still have this uh, most of the times when I feel like maybe I should post a story like that just talking about something that I feel in this moment and then like, nah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'll just, I'll just write uh, a post. And then it's like, I don't know if I want to write that long. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think it's, it's, um, it's about taking that first step and being like, ah, oh, let's do this. Just be brave and, and doing it over yeah. and over again, because it never gets, it never gets, it's always something to look up to and always something to to improve so you'll always feel a bit of um how to say an uncomfortable feeling like it's not gonna be always 100 comfortable yeah <laughs> do yeah. you do you, do you think the same yes i think the exact same especially so stories now i am solid on stories i can hop on i don't get nervous i you know i used to but now stories is fine but anytime I do a live or like a podcast like this with you, I do always still get a little nervous beforehand. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. And it's something that will be up there. The stories, let's say, will pass after 24 hours. But yeah, <laughs> don't worry. You're doing a really good job and I'm really happy, happy to have you on. And it's uh, it's really good. an honor because I've been following you for for quite some time now. I think a few years. Yeah. So uh, I've been following a bit your journey. I never thought that I would actually get to talk to you at some point. And then I felt like, Aww. whoa, wait a second. Now I have a podcast. Perfect. You know, <laughs> you know what's the, fun the funny thing with the podcast is that you can reach different kind of people. Probably I could never have a one, one hour talk with you just like that. Just asking you, hey, do you want to have a do you want to have a talk? But like this, you get to make connections. So it's very interesting to... Uh, that I chose this space because I'm sure I will get a lot of uh, connection. I already got to meet a lot of wonderful people that otherwise I would probably never, never yeah. met. <laughs> yeah, it is really a beautiful thing. Yeah, I, <laughs> I would say so. What What's something that you're looking forward to in this year, 2022? There is so much that I'm looking forward to in 2022. I think I'm just really pumped for this year. And <laughs> um, just a few of the things off the top of my head is one, getting pets again, getting a dog and a cat. <laughs> um, yeah. You're getting we, both in the same time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We used to have um, an adventure cat and he went everywhere with us. He was the most well behaved cat. He would. Like we would take him hiking with us and he wouldn't need to be on a leash or anything. He would just follow us on the trail. Um, he was so friendly, would go up to strangers, like wanted pets. He was the coolest cat. And unfortunately, he passed away before we went abroad um, to Africa, which we were actually going to take him with us. Mm. But um, he passed away. And so this whole past year has been the longest time in my life that I've never had an animal. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so I am really excited to get pets again. Um, and we are getting a dog and a cat in the probably the same month or two months. Um, have, so that's Have exciting. you decided already on which, which kind of dog will you get? My husband wants a 
Dutch Shepherd. <laughs> Dutch Shepherd. How does that look like? Oh, I have to look it up. <laughs> yeah, they look kind of like Malinois, if you know what a Malinois is. But... No, yeah, I'm, getting, I'm getting even more confused now. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, I see now a Dutch Shepherd. Yeah, he wants to train it and, and have it as like a protection dog and and do mm. all that stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> So now you you got an you got an apartment. How is that gonna change your traveling habits? And because uh, you're probably not gonna travel now, the three hundred and sixty five days a year. Yeah, no, definitely not. <laughs> um, the past like six months of our full time travel was so full on. We were at a new place near almost every single week. And it was a lot having to like pack and repack every week and, and, you know, going on airplanes and buses and trains to get around and it's very exhausting. And so the apartment is a very much welcome change, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but we're definitely still going to travel. Uh, we have, we've been talking about a road trip sometime in January um, to California, which will probably be a couple days to a week long. Um, and then we'll probably go abroad sometime in the spring or summer for a few weeks and so i think that's kind of how we're going to do it now we still definitely want to travel and do all that mm. but it's going to be much less and then we have an actual home base to come back to yeah chill out and relax for as long as we need <laughs> yeah that that must uh must be a a nice and chill step to take oh, yeah. it feels so chill and to just even just be like, able to like sit on a couch and watch a whole like movie and go to in bed in my own bed and wake up and cook breakfast yeah. and not have to worry like oh we have to pack and we have to catch a train mm -hmm. by 6 a.m <laughs> yeah yeah it's something <laughs> something different i also find myself in the uh, a similar stage in my life i used to to not travel like you, but live in different, let's say I lived in Portugal for one year, then Hungary for one and a half years, Sweden. <laughs> uh, so I, I moved a bit around and now I feel like, okay, I want to build something and make a, make a home and to have somewhere to go back to, to always come back to and call it home. Yeah, I relate to that so much. <laughs> mm. So you basically traveled everywhere. Or at least that's what it seems to me uh, yeah, we... by looking <laughs> on your Instagram and everywhere. And have... uh, tell yeah, me. I think a lot of Asia, um, a lot of Africa, a lot of Europe, Australia. The only place we haven't yet been to is South America. And that's that's our plans for this year is to explore more of South America. <laughs> yeah, I think I actually saw a TikTok where you were saying, where you travel and i was like hey where is south america there <laughs> <laughs> yeah no we haven't ever been before not even to mexico so i am really excited because it looks so beautiful down there <laughs> so so what are what are some of your most favorite places where you've been i feel like this always changes <laughs> it depends on my mood <laughs> tell me are in your mood right now um we were really, really blown away by Namibia in, in um, Africa. And I think just because one, if you would have asked me five years ago, oh, like, have you ever heard of Namibia? Have you ever been? I'd be like, I did not even know that was a country that existed. I didn't never heard of it before. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is so much to do in Namibia and all the different landscapes they have. It's really so incredible. And everyone we met there, we just felt so safe and, and warm. And it, it was really cool experience. So we really liked Namibia. And then in Europe, we were honestly impressed with Paris, which I feel like people get mixed reviews on. And I think the reason why we loved it so much is because we went into it with like zero expectations because I've heard some people are like oh it's so overrated and then other people are like oh I love it so much like it's so mm -hmm. magical so I was just like I'm just gonna go in you know no expectations and see how it goes and we had beautiful weather the whole time the city was vibrant and young and beautiful and and we really had a great time in Paris like I, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would <laughs> do you find that um 
usually you enjoy much more the non-touristic places or the common touristic places where everyone goes when they go in one city or one country how is that for you i feel like they both have their their areas where they excel because some touristy places are touristy for a reason and they I, I love it. And I like Horseshoe Bend here in um, Arizona, for example, is so incredibly touristy, but we went for sunrise and it truly like there's a lot of people there for a reason. It's truly incredible. Um, but then uh, on the flip side, there are places where, you know, it's incredible to be there all by yourself and think, wow, like not hardly any people have been here. Like, it's so crazy mm -hmm. that not more people know about this place and it's yeah like that's a whole different feeling and experience mm. yeah i i love that and i i personally feel the same about about places i used to travel in spain with my backpack just by myself and i went i didn't have a plan that i would go to these touristic places so i would just i would just be, just be walking and visiting all kinds of small cities and i would find wow i never even heard of this city and it's so beautiful and there's not so many people but it's like wow <laughs> like why no one uh, talks about this and then i i discovered the the beauty of going a bit um around the uh, the touristic places and not just um uh, searching on google oh where to go <laughs> in paris yeah yeah i feel the same way <laughs> and 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 uh, i was following a lot i don't know about you but i was following a lot my my intuition when i used to travel like just say oh shall i go on this road or on that road let's <laughs> see where that leads us how was that for you did you have some moments like that um i don't actually think so but only because my husband is like very everything has a plan and we need to know everything before we go <laughs> mm -hmm. I think if it were up to me, I would definitely, I'd probably still be like lost wandering the streets somewhere <laughs> right now. <laughs> I think it's different when you travel alone or when you travel with someone because it's it's a different level of responsibility. You're not just responsible for your own life, yeah. but you're responsible for someone else's. So then you need to take things more, That's true. more responsible, <laughs> I would say. That's very true. <laughs> I would probably not have I would probably have done the same as your as your husband in that aspect. I'll be like, okay, let's let's think for a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so did you have any any fears about traveling that uh, um for example before you started traveling you were thinking that okay, what uh, what if this happens? What if like if you had any fears that later they turn out to be just dust oh yes and i feel like like one of the main reasons i love travel is because it really does just open your eyes and um completely dismantles all the preconceived ideas that you had of a place and mm -hmm. like one thing i realized after traveling eight months through africa and spending three months backpacking in asia and going to australia and europe that like 90% of people here on earth are just people. Everyone's kind and welcoming and loving. And that's what you get for the most part. Of course, you know, there are areas and stuff that are more dangerous than others. And, um, you know, not to say that bad things don't happen and don't exist, but for the most part, you know, everywhere you go, people are just people. And yeah. um, I really love that about travel. I feel like my heart has opened up a lot since um, traveling the world and experiencing different cultures and different people and everything like that. Um, but yeah, like we've definitely gone in with the idea that a place is going to be like more dangerous or we're going to get like robbed or mugged or something. And, um, thankfully for us, nothing like that has ever happened. Um, we did have our camera gear stolen in Zanzibar, which was unfortunate, but you know, no one got hurt. It wasn't like, we didn't need, we weren't um awake when it happened it wasn't like we yeah. got mugged or anything scary um but yeah for the most part you know it, it totally flips your idea of of what a place is and and most people are very kind and very loving people 
Yeah, I love that. I think it changes your your perspective on whole life in general and um, gives you a more positive um, mental attitude about everything. Because when you yeah. don't have the experience, you might think that all these bad things happen because probably this is what we see in media, this is what we see in, in movies, because all the action movies, they need... They need something, you know, some substance. It's not everything just clouds and pink. So, yeah. <laughs> so then we start, if we don't have the actual experience, we start thinking that um, things are much worse than they actually are. Yeah, absolutely. So how was the whole COVID situation? Because you traveled, you were traveling through it. So yeah. how did you manage? So at the start of 2020, when every like the whole world went on lockdown, we were stationary for about six months in our RV. Um, and after that, I think January, it was very early January 2021 is when we left America and we went. Our original plan was to go to Germany. So we flew to London and we did our two week quarantine so that we could fly to Germany. But during that two weeks, Germany and all of Europe shut down. And so we were like, okay, well, we can either stay in London where it's cold and gloomy and wait and, you know, wait and wait and wait to see when things are going to open back up, or we can go to somewhere that is open and um, warm and, (laughs) (laughs) you know, still get to continue our journey and, and continue seeing the world. So that's when we went to South Africa Um, Most of Africa stayed open um, all through 2021. We did do a bazillion COVID tests. Oh, my God. (laughs) We needed like one before we got on a plane and flew. Sometimes we needed them like once we arrived in the country. Um, But yeah, everything was pretty open. And then the summer, Europe opened up. And so we were able to to then go to Europe and, and see and do a road trip um, to a bunch of different countries. And yeah, it really isn't as hard as people think it is to still travel. Um, you know, as long as you look up the country's regulations, a lot of times it's usually either a negative COVID test or a vaccine. And Mm -hmm. as long as you have your proof of those two things, everything is basically as normal. And, um, Hopefully we'll see more of that in 2022. <laughs> yeah, and that was also my experience with traveling through COVID. I, I traveled not not a lot, but uh, I had some flights and went to some countries. And then I noticed that when I look on the website and all these rules and uh, everything seems so complicated, then you arrive there and it's someone just checking your COVID test and just looking for one second and then just lets you go into the country. <laughs> and... Oh, yeah. no one said that on the <laughs> website. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it really, it w- wasn't as complicated as, as I thought it would be, um, definitely. <laughs> mm. Mm. So I want to ask you about your story of how you met your husband, Brad, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, because I think that your 60 second TikTok don't do doesn't do it very much justice (laughs) so i would want to to hear a more complete story of that if you don't mind yeah (laughs) so it is such a crazy story and there are a lot of people who don't even believe it sometimes when i tell them or talk about it um but basically what happened is once i moved out west i was on tinder um the dating app and my husband brad was on vacation in the US from Australia. And so that's when we matched on Tinder. He left like literally the next day. And so there wasn't any time for us to like meet up and we just continued talking and we continued like FaceTiming each other almost every single day. And a month later he asked if he could fly me to Australia so that we could meet for the first time. And at that time, I didn't have a passport. I'd never left the country before. Um, I was also really broke. And <laughs> so that's <laughs> not, it, it wouldn't have happened if he didn't offer to, to pay for the ticket. But um, yeah, so I had my mom call him before I left so that she knew 
and she knew like him and and you know she fell in love with him right away i think the accent probably helped <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> yeah and then so yeah not long after that i flew to australia for 10 days um, we had an amazing time and I really just felt like I got to know him on a whole different level. And he, he really is an incredible guy. And I went back home a few months later, I think that was in January. And then in April, I bought myself plane tickets to Australia. I stayed there for a whole month. We went on a road trip. Um, I met all of his family. We officially started dating. And then I had to go back home to the US again. And we did long distance for a little bit. And then that year in August, I picked up everything and moved to Australia so that I could be with him and live there for a year. Then we got married. Then we moved to the US and started our just whole crazy lives. <laughs> that sounds so surreal and uh, so such a like such a beautiful, beautiful story. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's I still like can't believe that happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> but now now you connect the dots and you understand why, right? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I still cannot go get over the fact that your mother was face face timing him to <laughs> to see how he is. Yeah, and she was for real like if you do anything to her and I don't hear from her in like a couple of days, I will be coming there and I will hunt you down. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, okay, yeah, fine by me. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> That's so nice. And I think you, you mentioned in one of your TikToks that, um, that we so often speak about red flags, red flags, but we don't really speak about the green flags. And in your case, it seems like, like everything was so right like it was so meant to be yeah do you want to speak a bit about these green flags and how yes. how is it with them <laughs> i love giving this advice because i was in like two long-term relationships before this and i thought you know i was in love i lived with one of them i was we were looking at engagement rings and everything and um looking back now it's just like how did i think that was love like it's so crazy to me. It was, um, it wasn't like horribly toxic or anything, but it definitely wasn't a healthy relationship. Mm. Um, and, and going through this with Brad and this experience where everything was just easy to like love him and, and, and be loved by him. And it was so easy and, and it really did seem like it was like meant to be. And, you know, we've been together now for over five years, married for four years, and it, I still feel the exact same way. Um, so some of the, the just green flags that I noticed in our relationship early on was, um, he never once has gone through my phone or my text messages or asked for my passwords or anything like that. Like we always had this insane amount of trust in each other. And like, I've been hurt in relationships before where people have cheated. I'm pretty sure he has too, but you know, we knew that with each other, like we, he never made me question his investment in me or our relationship. He always made it perfectly clear to me that he wanted to be with me. And he showed me that through his actions and through his words and, and how he treated me. And I always felt that way. And, and it was the same for him. You know, we always had this insane amount of trust in each other. Um, and one thing that I didn't mention in that um, TikTok is early on in our relationship, I think it was the first 10 days that I had, you know, been to Australia and I was 20 at the time. So it wasn't legal for me to like go out and drink in the US. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be 21. And so we went to the club and it was my first time going to a club in Australia and I had no idea what to wear. And so I wore this like <laughs> long black dress that I have like literally worn to a funeral before. And, <laughs> there, and I was like, I am way like over formally dressed right now. And so I was like, I just feel so uncomfortable. And I felt bad because I didn't want to like leave. But he was like, you know, we can we can Uber back home, you can change and you know, we can go back. And I was like, you would 
we just got here. You're fine with taking me back home so I can change into like a skimpier outfit and go clubbing. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, yeah, I, th I think that was a big thing too. Cause in my past relationship, he, if I wore like shorts that were too short, he would be like, and they, they literally weren't too short, but he would be like, no, you are not wearing that. You're not allowed to wear that shirt. Like he was very controlling yeah. in how I looked. Um, but Brad, as long as I feel good, he's happy. And that really showed that night, um, especially where, yeah, he was perfectly fine with me taking me back home so I could change into shorter shorts and a lip mm. smaller top. <laughs> and it's, it's yeah. funny because it, it seems like it seems like they are such small things, you know, that that made you uh, fall in love with him and uh, have this trust in him. But in the same time, I know from a man perspective that it takes a lot to to reach that kind of mindset and to be that kind of man. So although it seems like really small things and just, ah, he just said that you can have an Uber back home and uh, get change and go back. But uh, it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of previous work and work with yourself to, to reach that uh, really easy state of being. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And he really is. He um, he's so big into self-improvement and and self-awareness and um, just being like the best person and husband that he can be. And it truly makes all the difference in the world. And not only just how our relationship is, but just how he is as a person and much more mm -hmm. calm and and um, yeah. <laughs> caring yeah, that's, that's really it's really beautiful and we have a really beautiful story and you're really you're really fun to watch on on all these <laughs> platforms you you really you see how you put a lot of work in what you do and uh, also i've been coping a bit with photography so i know how much editing it goes in those beautiful <laughs> photos so well, thank you <laughs> It, yeah, I know. I know it goes. It goes a lot, and you're at a whole different level. So I would <laughs> never compare myself to you. But uh, it's really, really beautiful because it's. It seems like, um, how to say, when someone sees a beautiful picture that you took, they say, "Ah, you took this uh, amazing picture." But it's twenty percent taking the pictures and eighty percent editing the. <laughs> One thousand percent. <laughs> Yeah, it's so funny because um, there was a trend on TikTok a while ago that was like showing your before and after. Yeah, I'm sure you yeah, know. What yeah, yeah, I've seen about. that. Yeah, and the amount of comments I got that was just like, "Wow!" So I don't take bad photos. I'm just bad at editing. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And <laughs> sometimes you can take, you can also take bad photos. Like uh, the composition will not, will never, you can never edit it. Yeah, I mean, you can yeah. if you crop it in, but. Uh, it's yeah composition definitely plays you need some you well. need some basic basic knowledge of photography and then you're a very good photographer you just need to get good at editing yes <laughs> that's really yes. really cool i actually have a have a friend who who is really really liking your your instagram and i saw that now i was looking through your instagram and she was she was there at every post she was like this person liked to <laughs> liked it, you know. So I was like, "Oh, do you have a? Do you want to ask her something? I will have her on the podcast today." And so she she asked me this with um, uh, she's the one that wants to start the um, traveling and making making money out of uh, traveling and making having brand deals. And so that's why I asked you in the beginning about what would you say to someone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's so it's, cool. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's really, really, really fun. Um, <laughs> I want to, I have a question for you that I ask everyone on the podcast. And that is, what is your definition of a purposeful life? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know if I've ever been asked that question. I think the purpose of a meaningful life is to simply enjoy it. And I feel like sometimes as humans, we can get so caught up in, in wondering like, what is our purpose in life? What am I here for? What am I supposed to do? But for me, I've always felt like 
my purpose is to just enjoy being here and enjoy this experience that I have and, and make the most of it. And for me, you know, bringing happiness to me includes like helping other people and being a good person and being kind and traveling and, and doing what I love. And, um, and I think that is what makes a meaningful and and purposeful life. Hmm. I love that. (laughs) And many of many times when, when we would say that the purpose of life is to enjoy life, uh, we can also think about it in a hedonistic way that this is like it's only for pleasure. But in the same time, I think I think it's it's not like I don't uh, subscribe to that thinking. But I I think that it's enjoying what you what you do, no matter what you do, and don't make compromises with yourself. Find find the the things that you love doing, and uh, grow on that. Yeah. I and don't don't do the, don't do the things that you don't like doing and do more yes. of the things that you love doing <laughs> to simplify <I> perfectly <laughs> said <laughs> yeah i think that's uh, yeah that's really really nice and very very simple definition of of purpose and i i love it thank you for that <laughs> um i don't want to take uh, more of your time and i just want to ask you where can people find you what is your favorite platform to interact with people? So my favorite, you probably know, is going to be Instagram. <laughs> I'm <Ta-da. laughs> most active on Instagram. And my handle is through the lens, through common spelling, dot the dot L-L-Y-N-S. <laughs> I'll also put it down in the description so people can just click on it. Perfect. <laughs> Good. You can find it also on TikTok also on YouTube, right? Are you on YouTube? I am, but I am not active on there. <laughs> ah. Well, then Instagram and TikTok it is, and yep. then people can find every everything that you do. I see that you post a lot of uh free free courses and free booklets and yes, uh, for yes. people to get started. So that's really nice. Yep. I, all over my Instagram page are tons of tips and information for people to get started as well as my blog and website. Um, there's a bunch of free resources on there to help people start their journey and, and navigate their way through this crazy creator world. 